Has anyone else noticed that there's not been a lot of news from Las Vegas regarding the move? You are Locked On A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, A's fans, and welcome to Locked On A's, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast we talk about your Oakland A's all year long. And this is their final year in Oakland. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan, but by all means, just call me Sully. I've been a baseball podcast for a while now, and this is my sixth full season here at the Lockdown Podcast Network, and I've been subbing as your long-term host here at the Lockdown A's show. Follow us at Lockdown A's on Twitter and Instagram. I'm your pal, Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 to get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Visit FanDuel.com slash Lockdown to get started. All right. Well, we're still, uh, I guess from the high of the final win, the wonderful final win against Milwaukee set where they salvaged the final game of the series there. Uh, the A's have today off. This is being dropped, you know, sometime on Monday. I'm going to guess late Monday morning, early Monday afternoon. I don't know. Depend where you are. I guess if you're in England and I do, we do have a couple of listeners from, overseas so uh it's probably already tomorrow but the a's have monday off so it's a good thing they brought out uh mason miller to get four outs to finish off the final game against minnesota they're gonna be playing cincinnati and that's gonna be a really i think that's gonna be a very interesting series because the cincinnati reds are a very talented team there's no getting around that but they've also been an underachieving team for about an hour and a half, they were a wild card team in, I want to say, in, in June. And like everything has been, well, it's they've been a weird club because they have, they have undeniably have talent and they should be a lot better than they are. But yet they can't seem to put together a winning product. I mean, the they're a sub 500 team. And a week from today is going to be September. Uh, so we're going to see. Right now, they have not announced who their starting pitch is going to be. The A's are going to be starting Spence. And that should be pretty good. Uh, also, Cueto, Johnny Cueto, is pitching for the Angels on Tuesday against Herder of the Tigers. That's right. Johnny Cueto is cashing a check. And good for him. I've always been a big Johnny Cueto fan. Uh, he He's an interesting trivia question. He is the last pitcher to throw a complete game in the World Series, did so in the 2015 World Series, although no one will ever explain to me why Steven Strasburg didn't throw a complete game in Game 6 of the 2019 World Series. He was pitching in the ninth inning. It was already a blowout, and they lift him to have friend of the podcast, Sean Doolittle, finish out the game. Anyway, uh, but I digress. Um, so we're going to have a little clearer image on what is happening in the Cincinnati series for tomorrow's show. Uh, Jeff Carr, who's been a guest on the show here before, he is the host of Locked on Reds. And the last time the A's and the Reds did a, a uh, played each other, we had a fun crossover. So guess what we're going to do again? We're going to do it again. He's going to come in. We're going to preview the series. That's going to be the show that's going to drop either early, you know, sometime Tuesday morning. And we're going to see if we're going to party like it's 1972 or 1990. In 1972, in case you're wondering, the A's were huge underdogs against the Big Red Machine, and they just lost Reggie Jackson to injury, and the Reds looked poised to win the World Series title, and the A's wound up winning it in seven. There's the uh, program from that, the World Series of the year that I was born. And then 1990, the two teams faced off again, uh, this time, the A's were heavily favored. They're the defending World Series champs. And there was a sense of the A's wanted to win this so they could truly celebrate. The A's won the 1989 World Series, but that was the Earthquake Series. The celebration was somewhat muted because of what had just happened in the Bay Area. And 1990 was like, okay, this one's just going to have fun. And it looked like they, they, they steamrolled their way to the division title. 
even though they got a little bit of a scare from the Chicago White Sox, who were a lot more competitive than people thought they were going to be. Then they absolutely manhandled the Boston Red Sox, and it looked like they were going to steamroll their way to a World Series title, and then the Reds swept them. And the A's have never been to the World Series since. It was the last pennant they won in Oakland, unless they have an absolutely remarkable September, which call me crazy, call me a pessimist. I don't see that happening. So we're going to see what happens. We're going to see what happens in that series. Uh, it, it, the Reds' playoff hopes are pretty much torpedoed at this point. And how Bell still is the manager of the team, I do not understand. I don't. Uh, he's been there for a while, and maybe they're just letting him play out the string. Maybe they're just saying, hey, you're a loyal company man. We're not going to fire you in midseason or even with a few months to go. But I don't know. I'm always of the mentality that if a manager is not doing the job, why are you going to keep letting him drive the bus? Um, not, not that this is entirely his fault, but he's clearly not the solution at this point. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. And the Angels with Johnny Cueto, uh, those, well, that's how this came out. Johnny Cueto is pitching. Um, the Tigers can go, uh, can reach 500 if they beat the Angels. Uh, and that seems to be an easy thing to do these days. Right now, uh, the Angels are two games behind the A's. So that's really as A's watchers should be looking at that. Yes. Yes, we also want to see the A's catch the Rangers. But guess what? The Rangers are going to be playing the White Sox, who already have 100 losses. we got a week left to go in August, and the White Sox are already at 100 losses. They may get to 120. So if we expect to gain any ground on the Rangers, that's probably not going to happen unless if the White Sox suddenly get a big burst of energy. But remember, avoid... Uh, avoid 100 losses, and the uh, A's are creeping closer to that. They are seven wins away, just seven wins away from avoiding uh, 100 losses for the season. And then that means they're 17 wins away from avoiding 90. Let's avoid 100 first and stay out of the cellar. And there you go. Well, anyway, that's that's the the burden of the off day. But when we come back, it is strange. And I hinted this at the opening. We come back, it is strange that there's kind of radio silence from Las Vegas. Hey, you've heard us talk about FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Well, we have a little something different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Then with a YouTube TV-based plan, you'll be able to watch regular season Sunday afternoon out-of-market games. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. Just visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to download America's number one sports book. Hey, thanks so much for making Locked On A's your first listen today. For your second listen, enjoy the Locked On MLB podcast hosted by me, your pal Sully. I'm there to provide national expertise with my point of view, and I'm going to get you ready for the Major League Baseball playoffs here in the dog days of summer. Prepare for the fall classic with me. I've got all covered every single day on Locked On MLB, available on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. Okay. It is now late August. Supposedly, the stadium in Las Vegas is supposed to start construction in April. Am I really out of line for saying the fact that we've heard virtually nothing from Las Vegas for literally months is really, really bizarre? We've gotten vague quotes. We've gotten occasional, well, we're hoping that we it will start at the right time. We're sure it's it's we're surely gonna do it at the right time. But we haven't had anything definite. And the plans that were announced, and I and I can't stress this enough, the plans that were announced 
were super vague. The designs of the stadium were super vague. It would seem to be too high to uh, to build it there as close to the hotel, as close to, I'm sorry, as the airport as it is. But also, there wasn't enough parking. The design of the stadium looked like it was AI generated and didn't seem to have basic things like bullpens or, or you know, uh, uh, concourses that are needed for a stadium. It looked like a first draft. And you would think with all of the bad press and all of the things that have been going wrong with the A's and all of the bad vibes that have been going on regarding the ownership how disorganized this is, what a bizarre disaster this has been so far, where they made announcements, well, we're still looking for investors, we're trying to get investors. All of those things you would think to win over the good folks of Las Vegas to make this happen for real, that they would be doing, working overtime for the PR, working overtime to get the city of Las Vegas excited about this. Instead, there's been virtually nothing. What have I missed? I've been looking for news. I'm not someone who's been casual about looking back and saying, oh, well, maybe you'll hear something. Oh, I missed that. No, I got news alerts on this. I'm trying desperately to look up facts about anything. And we've barely got any news from how it's going to work in Sacramento. That's still a mess. But you would think that things like an updated stadium design, plans, winning over the community, uh, all the questions that have been answered beforehand, the you know all sorts of community outreach would be happening with the A's in Las Vegas. And all we have in terms of the stadium news is still the stuff back in March. March! We've seen no updated designs. No designs that take into account the fact that it doesn't seem to be enough parking there. It doesn't seem to have any momentum behind it. You know, more than one person has said what I think is going to happen. You know, even Eric Burns was on the wonderful uh, Instagram feed that's curated by former Giants great Will Clark said what I've been saying all along, which is they're probably just going to stay in Sacramento. But if that's the case, then say that. If that's the case, then make that clear. I, I'm I'm sorry. I do think there's a better chance that I will be named Speaker of the House in 2028 for either party than Las Vegas Stadium for the A's being ready for 2028. I, you have to have things like a completed design with all the I's dotted and the T's crossed. You have to have money behind it, and you have to have a community that's behind it. Those are three little details. And when the sort of the, the rough draft version of the stadium that seemed to be done on the school bus on the way to school, last minute, like, oh, God, that pro- my science project is due tomorrow. That's I mean, that's the that's the vibe that we all got from that, right? And the fact that we haven't had any updates on that, you would think they would be doing everything they can to get people pumped and excited about it. Instead of the the same stale vagueness, at least give us give us a drone show, give us something to make people excited. Answer some questions. We still have nothing. We still have virtually nothing. All right, well, we've talked a lot about this, and um, this is, uh, uh, and I get frustrated by it. I'm trying to find the silver lining. I'm hoping that it could work in Sacramento. And uh, let's read some stuff for some people have been saying, been been putting on the YouTube page. Uh, Sanchez X22 says, stay in SAC, everything will be good here. Maybe. At least some people in Sacramento have been showing some enthusiasm for it. And I've said before, I think Sacramento could be the kind of market that could really embrace a ball club like this. They certainly embrace the Kings. They would ha- they have to do things to that ballpark. You know, like, first of all, kick the River Cats out. 
send the River Cats to Fresno and have the current Fresno team find somewhere to play. A lot of California League teams folded. There's some stadiums out there they can play in. Hell, have them play in the Coliseum. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I Sacramento seems like an, an, an infinitely better choice than Las Vegas at this point. But you have the ballpark issue. So, you know, at least with there, you could create a temporary plan. Uh, you could fill in left center and left center field and right center field with, you know, maybe add 10,000 seats there and put awnings over the whole freaking stadium. Uh, you got to do that at least initially. Otherwise, uh, you're going to see empty seats in Sacramento, which will be embarrassing. But I think Sacramento will support the team if they get a sense that the A's may stick around. Now, um, and and that they will at least acknowledge that with the sun there, um, that there's you have to be able to uh, accommodate the fact that the the bright sunlight is going to be a deterrent for people going there. Useless Trucker, who's an Everyday A's listener, says, um, where is it here? He says, the Sacramento Sunstrokers. Catchy name. Catchy name. I'd rather have that than just the Athletics which is what they're officially going to be next year. No city designation. I, I, if we, if there was a commissioner of baseball, and it's been a while since we've had a commissioner of baseball, commissioner of baseball would step in and say, stop it. Just stop it. Even if you're only in Sacramento temporarily, that's where you are. And that's the team that's, that's the city that you're essentially playing for. Um, By the way, uh, where, where is this person? Rampal Bum Depot, 7648. Trivia. San Francisco's famous summer fog is meteorologically related to the extreme sunniness of Sacramento summers. There you go. And, and isn't that funny that there's a connection, some meteorological connection between the Giants and the A's if the A's play in Sacramento? You know, um, I went to many, many games in Candlestick Park when I was uh, growing up. And uh, it stunk. That was a lousy ballpark. It was a wonderful park in that it weeded out the casual fans. So when you were at a Giants game in the 80s, even when they were good with Chili Davis and Will Clark and Rick Russell and Kevin Mitchell and, you know, uh, Dave Dravecki and, and Jose Uribe, you know, all those great Giants players from then, Robbie Thompson, you know, Matt we Manwaring, um, you know, right up until when Bonds arrived. You had to be a diehard Giant fan to go to those games because there was no reason to go there if you were a casual fan. And it's kind of like what happened with the Coliseum. When you go to the Coliseum, you know it's just diehard A's fans there because no one's just going to an A's game because it's the cool place to be seen. Um, but the the coldness of Candlestick Park just made it brutal. And I like cold weather. I do. I do like cold weather. Um, why do I live in California? <laughs> that's a different podcast altogether. But, you know, to sit there in the freezing cold in, Sac in San Francisco um, was, was brutal. But I'll have to say one thing. I would much rather sit in a freezing cold stadium than a broiling hot stadium, and I'll tell you why. Because you can always put on a jacket. But eventually, you can't keep removing stuff. Um. Because, uh, quite frankly, uh, you get arrested for that. Get supplies from the site that's made for the skilled trades. Supplyhouse.com. Supplyhouse.com is a reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online. Their easy-to-use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right. Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. Need help with an order? Get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business and talk to a real person every time. 
Pros in the skilled trades can get a competitive edge by joining SupplyHouse.com's free Trade Master program. Every Trade Master gets access to a dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. Join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at SupplyHouse.com slash TM and order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at SupplyHouse.com. SupplyHouse.com. Thanks again for making Locked On A's your first listen today. Check out Locked On MLB podcast with me, your pal Sully. I've got it covered every single day. You can find the link to Locked On MLB in the description so you don't need to search. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. All right, we're back in. We're back in. Um, let's th- let's read a couple of more uh, viewer questions here. Because uh, we talked a lot about San Jose, or I talked a lot about San Jose as being a logical, what should have been a logical landing spot for the A's. Um, uh, Ken D's TV 81853 says, honestly, I hate, oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Sorry, I'll get you there. Uh, uh, this is what I meant to write. Uh, Jerry Trash 6563. Don't worry, Ken Z, you'll be, I just saw the wrong thing there. Uh, don't forget it. In a few years, Bart will be going to San Jose, and Ace Ballpark there would have been perfect. Yeah, you would have been able to have the public transportation from Oakland to go into San Jose, so you would have been able to have the South Bay fans and still have a connection with East Bay fans going on Bart. Uh, it was, uh, it was, it it stunk. It stunk. By the way, um, I had asked. Uh, this is a one from a, a a few a while ago when I was saying. When did all this start? Like, when did the the bad things start happening with the A's? And uh, WLEDEP says, it all went wrong when Charlie moved them there. Instead of waiting for the Truman Sports Complex in KC, everything Charlie touches ends badly. Okay, um, and this is someone I've read more than one biography on Charlie Finley. I think he's a fascinating figure. Um and to say everything he touches ended badly, uh, well, he certainly had some success. He put together the A's team that won three straight championships. And if he was allowed to rebuild the way he wanted to, I bet he could have built the new A's team in the late 70s. But that's not the point. You do make an interesting point here, which is the A's probably should never have left Kansas City. And this is coming from someone I want them to stay in Oakland. I've loved them in Oakland. But. They probably sh- that I could have made you could have made the argument that they should have stayed in Philadelphia and the Phillies moved, but they didn't. That's a whole other podcast that I did. But they sh- could have stayed in Kansas City if a local owner had bought the team and Finley had you know made a bid for one of the expansion franchises, but probably San Diego. That's one thing. Um, but if Finley had kept the team. He was pushing to have their own stadium. In fact, the reason why the Truman Sports Complex has what was then called Royal Stadium, it eventually became Kauffman Stadium, and Arrowhead Stadium be side-by-side. I mentioned this before, why they were side-by-side instead of a multi-purpose ballpark was to appease Finley. Say, here, you got a baseball-only park. And it turns out that that complex lasted a hell of a lot longer than a lot of the other multi-purpose ballparks because they designed Royals slash Kauffman Stadium for baseball. And I've been to a game there. It's a wonderful, wonderful place to see a baseball game. And Arrowhead was designed perfectly for football. And just ask any Taylor Swift fan, that turned out okay. So if he had waited, instead of hastily moved them to the Oakland Coliseum, then chances are, the A's would have stayed there. And I've made this point before. The nucleus of the great A's teams was already in place. Reggie Jackson made his debut in Kansas City. Catfish Hunter made his debut in Kansas City. Bert Campanaris made his debut in Kansas City. Uh, many of the, and you know, when they were still in Kansas City, Vita Blue was still in their system. Blue Moon Odom, Joe Rudy. So many of the play Rick Monday, so many of the players who became key parts, and I know Monday wasn't on the championship team, but he was flipped for Ken Holtzman. They could have had their dynasty. The dynasty was already being put together, and they could have had their dynasty in Kansas City, and who knows? If that had happened, chances are 
I'm guessing no major league team would have come to Oakland. I think the expansion would have happened to San Diego and the expansion could have happened to Seattle and eventually teams moved to Arlington and to, and the expansion of, of uh, Montreal, but there would not have been an expansion to Kansas city. So maybe they would have gotten to Miami or Toronto faster than they did, but you're on to something. If they had stayed in Kansas city, what could have happened? Um, all right, let's talk about some of the other one. Uh, I had done the, uh, uh, I had mentioned what was the greatest moments of peak happiness for A's fans. And Ken D's TV 1853 said easily has to be the three feet, 72, 73, and 74, or the sweep of the Giants in 89. I like how you think. You didn't let any of the distractions like the Mike Andrews or the Catfish Hunter free agency or the earthquake in 89. Deter you, you are just pure A's fans. Um, by the way, this was something I when uh, the series when they lost a couple of tough games to Tampa. Um, honestly, I hate Jose Siri. This is from sorry, Kendi's TV 1853. So I'm sorry I started reading this one prematurely. I hate Jose Siri now, literally single-handedly beat the A's three times this year. Yeah, that's right. He did earlier this year a couple of huge home runs and key hits for Tampa against the A's. Um and uh, I want to, this was my last one here. Save the People 2004 wrote, Save the Oakland Coliseum. I'm going to address this in a later episode, but I saw a photograph of a stadium, a baseball stadium in Japan, which has been turned into a, an apartment complex. They've kept the, they, they didn't do what they did to like the Polo Grounds or Ebbets Field where they knocked down the stadium. But instead, they built the apartments within the stadium. The stadium still exists, and there's apartments all in them. And it looks amazing. And there's also, uh, I believe it may be in Indiana, and I'll go look this up for a future one, where they basically have kept the stadium, and they have a giant sort of public lawn area there, but they've built the apartments all throughout what was the ballpark. I would think that would be pretty cool to do that with the Oakland Coliseum. If you're a diehard Raiders fan or A's fan, to live on the site of the Coliseum. Here's the problem. Plumbing. All right. So uh, thanks. If you, if, if you have things you want me to talk about, be sure to make uh, to put some comments on below. Uh, Jeff Carr's going to be here. We're going to preview the A's and the Reds. And there you go. So follow us at Lockdown A's on Twitter, or whatever it's called now. And same handle for Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter. Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Talking about the silence from Las Vegas. This has been Lockdown A's for the 26th day of August, 2024. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. <laughs>